फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय वर्क प्लेस फॉर हैंड्स ऑन फेको एंड एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग लेटस ऑब्जर्व दिस टोटली अन एडिटेड सर्जरी दिस इज अ वाइट कैंट्रैक्ट बट न्यूक्लियस इज वेरी सॉफ्ट दिस इज द मेन इंसिशन विद अ 2.8 पॉइंट एट मिलीमीटर स्टील कैराटोम एंड द इंसिशन इज जस्ट on the posterior aspect of the limbus this is a side port on the right side of the main incision and this is another side port on the left side of the main incision the side ports are 3 clock hours away from the main incision if the side ports are 90 degree away from the main incision astigmatism induced by the main incision is neutralized to some extent by the side ports and now the anti capsule is stained with trypan blue dye underneath an air bubble little bit of adrenaline is injected to maintain the dilatation of the pupil during emulsification of the nucleus excess dye is washed out with simco and now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and now let us see how to to the rexis how we can do rexis in such cases i'm using a cystitome to make a puncture at the center of the capsule and i find that there is no egress of any oily or uh, milky fluid i hold this capsular tag and uh, i go to periphery and and find that there is no tendency of the capsule to run away and i complete the rexis here Uh, a, a little bit of spiraling of the capsule is done to get a round rexis so this is an optimum sized rexis the size of the rexis is about say 5.25 mm little bit of hydrodissection is done not much of hydrodissection is required in such cases so little bit of hydrodissection is done the nucleus is tapped and i find that the nucleus is very soft and if i want to catch this nucleus i may end up catching the posterior capsule so i do this pre chop so the pre chopper goes only up to 1.8 mm and it will not touch the posterior capsule moreover the under surface the uh, you know the projected end is blunt and it will not cause any piercing any tear or cut of the posterior capsule even if it is touched and now i go into the anterior chamber with the fecal needle i have done to a hemineuclear and the hemineuclear easily aspirated they are waiting to be aspirated and here i find that this hemineuclear is quite large and and if i try to hold this it is just getting it enough so uh, it is dangerous to try to hold such soft nuclei so i come out again inject visco and take the you uh, know nucleus sustainer rotate it little bit or by the sustainer itself i pull it out of the bag and by the sustainer itself see it is it gets cut it is so soft i don't need even the pre chopper sustainer is a round bodied instrument with a, a ball at the tip and now this is the fecco needle just uh, easily the nuclear material is coming to the tip followability is very good vacuum is 480 flow rate is 48 and ultrasonic energy in this case is though it is set at 60 i am controlling the power by foot switch so maximum 20% ultrasonic energy is used in such cases some visco we can see this some cortex uh, on the right side so irrigation from right side and aspiration from left and i try to remove this cortex and you see it comes very easily it's so soft and now the rest of the cortex is being removed by the bimanual irrigation aspiration in this case i have not used simco for cleaning of the cortex you should practice all instruments you should be you know competent in using all the instruments that is used in cataract surgery 
don't say I use only bimanual, I don't use Simco or I use only Simco, I don't use bimanual, not like that. You… you learn to use all the instruments. In some cases, Simco will be easier to use, in some cases you will need bimanual and thus it is possible to complete this surgery. And now I am enlarging the main wound, it is better to enlarge the wound in some cases when… particularly when we are using a B cartridge, just by one cut and the main wound is enlarged to about three millimeter. We, it initially it is 2.8, it becomes 3 and this is a B cartridge. The cartridge gets nicely engaged if we enlarge the main wound, otherwise sometimes the lens will get stuck at the wound, only up to after one third of injecting the lens and then the wound gets stressed too much. And now the irrigating probe goes behind the lens and uh, some amount of polishing of the uh, posterior surface of the lens is being done, something is sticking to the posterior surface of the lens. And now the side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration. If the wounds are of adequate size, we do not have to hydrate a lot minimal hydration will cause sealing of the wounds if the wounds are not stressed. And how? If the wounds are very small, it will get stressed, there will be fish mouthing of the wounds and you know, it will leak a lot and to close those fish mouthed wounds, we have to hydrate a lot. I have seen fellows hydrating almost a superior one third of cornea to get the wound sealed. Uh, here, this is a bit of moxie, then I close the side port. Again, I am hydrating because the left wound was leaking a bit. And now, this is final lavage, and this is the way I form the anti chamber. One flow goes inside, and uh, another flow outside. and give a f forward and upward push of the anterior wall and you will see that the wound is nicely sealed. Thank you very much for your attention, hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve thousands of cataract blind people.